Greetings, statistics scholars, and welcome to this first video on section 6.1 of your text. In this video, we'll be taking a look at making confidence intervals, specifically making confidence intervals for population proportions. Let's begin by reviewing a little. Back in chapter number three, we learned the fundamentals of constructing confidence intervals. Suppose that, for example, in a random sample of 180 college students, 69 of them answered yes to the question, have you played a console video game in the past week? Based off of those results, we wish to estimate the proportion of all college students who play console games on a weekly basis. To do that, we start with a statistic that is gleaned from our, from our sample. Here, that's the sample proportion, which we call p hat. Here we would say that p hat is 69 divided by 180, or approximately 38.3%, 0.383. That would be our statistic, our estimate for the unknown population parameter. Now using that statistic, we can begin to construct our confidence interval. On the screen here, we have a picture of the basic anatomy of a confidence interval. Notice that right in the middle of our confidence interval, we place our sample statistic, 0.383. Then we're going to need to determine what distance we want to go away from that statistic to provide a desired level of confidence. That is known as the margin of error for the confidence interval. For example, we might decide that we want to be 95% confident with our interval. And we may decide that in order to be 95% confident, we need to go a distance of 0 0.071 or 7.1% away from our statistic in order to achieve that level of confidence. Once we have come up with that level of confidence, once we've come up with that margin of error, we are going to add and subtract that. We'll add and subtract that margin of error from our statistic to determine the upper limit and the lower limit for our confidence interval. If we subtract 0 0.071 from 0 0.383, we obtain a lower limit of 0.312. When we add 0 0.071 to our statistic, we get 0.454. And now we've obtained the limits of our confidence interval. We have our interval. And we can conclude by saying that we are 95% confident that the proportion of all college students who play console games weekly is somewhere between 0.312 31.2% and 0.454, 45.4%. That is the basic approach that we always use for finding confidence intervals. Begin with a sample statistic that's in the middle of the interval, determine the margin of error, and add and subtract that to find the upper and the lower limits of the interval. But where, we must ask, does the margin of error come from? That value of 0 0.071 that I chose to add and subtract to our statistic, what were its origins? The details of that are exactly what we've been exploring more recently in chapters five and six. In chapter five, we learned something critical. We learned that since sample proportions will be normally distributed under the right conditions, we can find the margin of error by multiplying the standard error of the sample proportion by a z-score. 
whose value depends on the level of confidence that we want. So margin of error will be z-score times standard error. That was the critical formula or the critical result from chapter five. For example, suppose that we knew that the standard error of the sample proportions here was 0 0.036. Now, if we want to have 95% confidence in our interval, we can find using stat key, for example, that we need to use a Z star value of 1.96 in order to achieve that level of confidence. So what will we do? We will multiply our Z score by our standard error. Once we've got it using, once we found the Z score using stat key, we'll calculate out that the margin of error is 1.96, our Z score, times 0 0.036, our standard error. And that'll give us our 0 0.071. So margin of error is Z score times standard error. But we may now ask, where does the standard error come from? Where did this number of 0 0.036 come from? Why is that the standard error for our sample proportions? And that is exactly the question that section 6.1 answers. Where does the standard error come from? How did we know that it was 0 0.036? Section 6.1 introduces an important formula, the formula for the standard error of the sample proportion. It says that the standard error for sample proportions can be found by taking the square root of the sample proportion times one minus the sample proportion and dividing it by the sample size n. SE equals the square root of p hat times one minus p hat divided by n. If we use that formula here, substituting in our 0.383, which was our p hat, we find that the square root of 0.383 times 0.617 divided by 180, which was our sample size, gives us the square root of 0 0.0013, which evaluates to 0 0.036. And here is the answer to the mystery. Why was the standard error about 3.6%? Because our formula indicated that it should be so. And now with this, we are fully equipped to find the confidence interval for any population proportion. We have all the ingredients that we need. What are the steps? First, find a sample proportion that comes from a random sample of size n. That is your statistic estimate that will end up going in the center of your confidence interval. Next, compute the standard error for the sample proportions using the formula. Standard error is the square root of sample proportion times one minus sample proportion divided by sample size. Next, decide what level of confidence you want to have. Would you like a 90% confidence interval, a 99% confidence interval? Based on the level that you have chosen, determine the Z star value that you will need to use. You're gonna to wanna to use your stat key or other technology to determine that Z score. Then critically multiply that Z value by the SE value to find the margin of error. Z score times standard error equals margin of error. Once you know your margin of error, add and subtract that value from your statistic 
to get the lower and the upper limits of your confidence interval. As a memory device for margin of error when working with proportions, remember, Z times SE gives us ME. Z times SE gives us ME. Now let's work an example from scratch. Try to follow along and answer the questions as they come up. Here's a research question. Dr. Goldberg is interested in what proportion of adults in Pennsylvania indicate that they prefer the Philadelphia Flyers as their favorite professional hockey team in the NHL. His goal is to form a 90% confidence interval for that proportion. Let's see what he comes up with. To create his 90% confidence interval, he begins by taking a random sample of 300 adults living in Pennsylvania. He finds that out of those 300, 120 of them prefer the Flyers as their favorite NHL team. Let's begin by answering this question. What is the sample statistic, the sample proportion P hat that Dr. Goldberg obtained? Take a moment and write that down on your paper right now. What is the value of p hat given this information? Did you write down this value? p hat equals 120 divided by 300. 120 out of the 300 who were surveyed indicated that they preferred the Flyers as their favorite team. As a decimal, that fraction evaluates to 0.4 or 40%. That is our sample proportion. Now, as a next step, let's find the important standard error. Remember that the formula that we want to use is standard error equals the square root of sample proportion times one minus the sample proportion divided by n, where n is the sample size. Given that formula, what will the standard error for the sample proportion be here? Remember, we had a p hat value of 0.4 and a sample size of 300 who were surveyed. Take a moment now and with your calculator, find that value. What is the standard error given the information that we have? Given that p hat is 0.4 and that n is 300. We should write down this. Standard error is the square root of 0.4 times 0.6 divided by 300. So standard error is the square root of 0 0.0008. As a decimal, that works out to about 0 0.0283, rounded to the fourth decimal place. That's our standard error. Another important question, the next important question that we need to answer is, what Z star value would need to be used for a 90% confidence interval? That's the confidence level that Dr. Goldberg had selected. We can use StatKey's normal distribution app to find this out. By opening up the app and indicating that the area between the two tails is 90%, We'll find the result that we're looking for. That Z star score is 1.645. To be 90% confident using the standard normal curve, we need to use a Z score of 1.645. So now we have all of the ingredients for getting the margin of error. We know our Z value, we know our standard error. 
it's 0 0.0283. Remember, Z times SE gives us ME. Z times SE gives us ME. So what is our margin of error? What is our ME? It'll be 1.645 times 0 0.0283. Try that multiplication now and see what result you get. Did you find about 0 0.047? That's the margin of error that we would have by multiplying our z-score times our standard error, 0 0.047, about 4.7%. Now, given that we have 0 0.047 as our margin of error, what are the limits of Dr. Goldberg's confidence interval? What will the lower limit and what will the upper limit be? Remember that Dr. Goldberg's original sample statistic, his sample proportion was 40%. And we've just now found that the margin of error is 4.7%, 0 0.047. Given a sample statistic of 0.4 and a margin of error of 0 0.047, what will the limits be? Do you have them? Let's check. The lower limit should be the statistic minus the margin of error. So it should be 40% minus 0 0.047. Taking away 4.7% from 40% gives us 35.3%, 0 0.353. What about for the upper limit? What did you come up with for that? You should have written down that the upper limit was the statistic plus the margin of error, 40% plus 4.7%, so 44.7%, or 0.447. Now we have the limits, and with this, we can at last reach our glorious conclusion about hockey team preference in the state of Pennsylvania. Dr. Goldberg will say that he is 90% confident that the proportion of all Pennsylvania residents who prefer the Flyers as their favorite NHL team is somewhere between 0.353, and 0.447, 44.7%. There we have it. The process of creating a confidence interval for a population proportion. Key ingredients, determine the standard error using this new formula that we have learned. The new formula that the standard error is the square root of the sample proportion times one minus the sample proportion divided by the sample size. Using that new formula from section 6.1, we can determine the standard error from basic information and then use that standard error to determine margin of error and from that, the limits of our interval. I hope you found this video to be instructive and helpful. Stay tuned for another forthcoming video on the subject of hypothesis testing for population proportions.